What's happening in Colorado right now is, to me, one of the more embarrassing situations that I've seen in any sports organization ever. Like, they don't have an identity. They don't have any institutional control. Their coach is on Twitter going at it. I love Deion Sanders so much, but it doesn't seem as if Deion Sanders knows what it takes to be a college football coach at that level. He's learning on the job to such a degree that like he's engaging in Twitter beefs against college kids. They, they're they losing recruits to the transfer portal left and right. No one really knows what they're building around or what they're doing. Are they an offensive team? Are they a defensive team? I mean, they're certainly not a defensive team. Are they explosive? Are they methodical? And it's, it's all kind of, it's like an empty swag burger, like a swag burger with no meat, no cheese, no nothing on that, no protein. It's just all condiments. An the empty bun, swag burger. An empty swag burger. Swag burger, no meat. It's like you dress it up and you boom, there's nothing in the middle of it. Oh, it's so like, that's actually, like what Cousin Eddie made in vacation? Yeah, exactly. There's no meat. They can't afford the meat right now. And so to me, I'm actually, it's getting to the point to where, you know, it's a little embarrassing for what's going on at, at Colorado. And if they limp into another four and eight season, it's going to be embarrassing in a big way. You have thoughts, Priscilla? He was on 60 Minutes. He was on the cover of Time Magazine. They came in last pay- place in their conference. It was a fun little story when they had the comeback against Colorado State. They beat TCU, and people framed it as they beat the defending national champ co-runner-up when TCU was a completely different team. So part of me was like rooting it for it to work, and then it became very political that if you didn't like Dion, it was for a specific reason, and then if you did like Dion, it was for a different reason, and it just, I don't know, man, it just got kind of like baked into this big stew when I think that it's the same for anybody. If you get a ton of attention and the team ends up stinking, people resent the attention you got, and that's all I think it is. I liked it some- as it was happening because I thought it was fun. College football was just completely imploding. And then this guy was coming in as almost the catalyst for some of that implosion, the way he was approaching building the program. I was like, I'm in. This is fun because college football is a fucking mess anyway. But it seems like, I, it just doesn't seem like, remember we did that segment, Van, when we were talking about mm-hmm. where he'll go next? That was like the height of the Dion mania. But now yeah. it's like that. I almost feel like the way it's playing out, he's probably just on TV in a year. Well, I mean, when you start to really get into it, that's when I knew it wasn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> like when when you when you started to like when I started to see you and you're into college football now, and that's right. kind of the thing. That's when I was like, "This is going to crash. This and is burn. bad. There's no way. They yeah, don't, we don't want like, casual Bill involved in like our college Bill, football. Like Bill every Saturday. In, th- th- that's when I started to identify. Oh, this is the college football fan that's actually all over Colorado. So th- yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? This is what I'll say. There is a unique opportunity here, though. The unique yeah. opportunity for Deion Sanders in Colorado is that the expectations are right back where they were at the beginning of last season. So they're in the Big 12 now. Being in the Big 12, a lot of people think that because there's no marquee team in the Big 12 right now that they're going to have a a push over there. No, you're going to deal with a lot of teams that have a a lot of program stability in terms of the way they turn out their athletes. You're not going to be dealing with a whole bunch of big-time five stars, but I was listening to Josh Pay talk about this, and he was saying that you're going to deal with a bunch of teams that are uh, manufacturing starters. So Mm. three years, you get a starter. And those people know how to play football. But still, though, the talent gap between them and some of the other teams is not going to be there. So if they peel off a couple victories, particularly early in the season, we're going to go right back to Colorado is back. That's That's not the problem. That's not the question. The question is, through a recruiting class, through a culture, what's the culture in Colorado right now? Through a recruiting class, through a culture, um, and through momentum, can you build something that's sustainable? And it just seems like there's a lot of chaos over there right now. I love Deion Sanders for all the reasons I should love Deion Sanders, to some of those reasons Russillo was talking about. I do. But I also love college football, and I can't turn a blind eye to the fact that the way you're doing, the way you do what they're trying to do, uh, it just doesn't work. You can't build a line through Transfer Portal. You can supplement through Transfer Portal. You can't build a whole program through it. Et cetera, 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 et cetera. So. Priscilla, where is Dion in 2026? Uh, if, they're, if he still wants to be there and they're better than they were last year, they'd probably be like, look, this is probably about as good as we can do. 
for a program that was one of the worst programs in college football for a long time. I don't know what the new Big 12 is going to look like. It could seem more wide open, but I was rooting for them because I was glad that a program did something this outside of the box. Like you screw up with this offensive coordinator who's on a seventh team all the time. You've always, you know what I mean? Like there's plenty of failures to go with the normal model. So try the different model. That's why I was so excited for Antonio Pierce. You know, even though the Jeff Saturday thing didn't work, I wanted it to work for Antonio Pierce and I was thrilled. And I know it's a little different with Dion. So I was rooting for it, but he just can't help himself sometimes. And I think when you're going to talk that much shit and asking people in the media, hey, do you believe? Do you believe? And then it's like, well, it's not my fucking job to believe. I'm just here to cover the game. And then they stink. <laughs> you know, we don't, we, we love attention in college football. We love the energy. We love the luncheons and the boosters and everybody get really excited. But it's like, all right, go out, go out and tackle somebody every Saturday and play some defense. But it was only one year in. So we'll see what happens. But it was a wave of, if you're not on board, you're a hater. And it's like, I, I don't, I don't think I'm a hater. I just, I'd be surprised if you were going to end up being that good. And then when you looked at the portal grade, I was like, maybe they are going to be this good as they started the season. Then you realize they couldn't play any defense and the offense fell apart. And all these things went south. And, you know, look, if you want to find guys that transfer out that have, a, that are going to shit talk the previous program, like get in line. You know, the athletic did that huge piece on all these guys and where they are now. And some of the stories were sad, but it's also kind of the way college football goes. You can find recruits from everywhere else that have gone, oh, this new guy came in and I left and I went through all this and I hate those guys. And here's my quote. Like, you can find all that kind of stuff. Like Dan's got Joe Burrow. <laughs> yeah, but no, like, even, look, there were guys, there were guys MF and Saban in that 07 team being like this guy. You know, coming in here, like telling me you're going to change it all over. So I hope it works out for him. But I, I think it's, I think the lines have been drawn where there are going to be some that absolutely just revel if he fails again. And then I would think if they get off to a good start, maybe some people will chill about what it actually means. Hmm. Do you, you know what I really hope, though? Last thing I'll say. What I hope is that for Colorado, what I hope, and for Deion Sanders, is that everything that he and the program purports to be, that they really mean it. Because I know a lot of people, take my mother, for example. And this is actually a very important thing to say culturally for like someone like my mom. When my mom thinks about Deion Sanders, my mother thinks not about football. She thinks about God and she thinks about family. Because that's what Deion Sanders tells you. He says God, he says family. And those are beautiful, amazing things, especially when you're going to send your son somewhere. And so when she watches the games and she's all into it and the games aren't going the way that they, they're, they're going and she sees some certain things, it, it starts to be like she actually was emotionally let down by how Colorado's season ended mm. because it didn't seem like it was about what she thought it was about. The more she got into it and she's reading these athletic articles and she's sending stuff to me, She's like, well, he's supposed to be a, a daddy and a father figure to these young men. And it's supposed to be about more than that. Like, how could they feel abandoned by him? And she doesn't quite get the business of college football and how it's supposed to go. Everything Ryan's saying is true. But you want to believe in what the standard there is supposed to be. And as hard as this is, the field will actually be a referendum on that. It will be because if you're willing to stick it out, if you can stick it out with players and develop them and doing all of this, you start to see that on the field. But if it's always firing this guy, quick fix, pointing the, point, like, like, you know, pointing the finger at someone, passing the buck on someone, you'll see a staccato, weird, bad season over and over again for them. So if their fundamentals are real, they'll have success. But I'm, I, I, no one can know right now if they are or not. It also could be a mess too, right? Like, if you want to believe the bad stuff, you could be like, it's a TV show. It's a reality show. Sure. It's, it's all about Dion. It's not really about the kids. Um, and this is all bullshit. And it's all hype and all these things. Like, you hear enough of it. But then again, you're like, all right, is that criticism specific to him or whatever? Like, I don't, I don't know. But there's a lot of evidence that that might be true. And then three years later, we're going, remember that? Right. Yeah. Well, but it's I, like when I don't uh, know. Remember when Paul West had coached the Nuggets in the early 90s and he 
tried that crazy offensive style and he just got torched and then that was it. Then a few years later, it's like, remember that Paul Westhead thing? It's Dion's not going to be like that with Colorado, right? It won't be that bad. No, like, I mean, it, yeah, like, look, I mean, they did go like, what are they? One of their last nine, they won one game in their last nine last year, right? But the the thing that was bothersome about that is anyone who had watched college football could see that coming. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, you know what I mean. Anybody who had watched the sport could see that coming. Even, you know, they they win a huge double overtime game, a uh, huge in terms of how right. how it was Ballyhooed, huge double rating. overtime game against Colorado State. I know it's a rivalry game, but I'm like, you no, know, if these guys are a top 20, top 15 team, probably shouldn't have went to double OT in Boulder uh, against a team that's not going to have very many guys hear their names called um, when the draft comes. So you knew that they were going to struggle when they got to conference plate, but they didn't just struggle. They completely got pulled apart at the seams. Yeah. There was infighting. There was coaching changes. There was backbiting. There was chirping out of the locker room. They the wheels completely fell off. Not just not not even just good losses, just it looked bad. No adjustments being made the whole nine. And you yeah. started to ask the question is, love Dion, love his family, love everybody over there. But the question starts to be like, what are we really doing? And also, I'll, something else I'll say before, before. Another thing is, the sycophantic way in which he's covered is not helping Colorado. It's not. Like, I watch Undisputed, and it doesn't matter what what the fuck happens. You watch Undisputed? It, the clips Jeez. come up on YouTube. Were you were sick that day? <laughs> Jesus. Okay, y'all want to diss. But I'm just saying, they... Did you, like, did the, you watch and, the episode when it asked if Colorado was Black America's team? Where you're like, yeah, all right, I, did. I, did I have to tape this when, one. <laughs> right, yeah. That, that's what that's what wrote me in. So I watched the Kalika, show, where's like, the remote? I got to press record. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that's what got so, me in there. But I watched it, and I love those. Like, like, y'all see? Now, when Keyshawn come out and start dissing, Bill, Bill, you don't want the smoke? <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I watch it, and no one's keeping it real. Like, everybody's like, it's like Colorado lost 59 to 7 last night. And you hear Skip Bayless go, but golly, that's seven points. Jesus Christ, with those kids out there hustling. You can tell that he's a leader of men out there. In the future, they're going to be able to cut that margin to 14. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? Just keep it real. This shit not going well. And that, like, that, that'll light a fire under them to maybe change some shit up. So I can't do the thing where I'm tepid in my criticism of, of Dion anymore. It doesn't, I can't do it for cultural reasons or any other reasons. I can't. 